Hello everyone. I'm trapped in a dimension where remote attestation is a reality, where web environment integrity is a real thing that's been around for a while. And I'm trapped in limbo because big tech doesn't like me. Let me tell you how we got here. Web Environment Integrity is a proposal by Google, a standard that they're prototyping in Chromium, the core of Google Chrome. You know Google Chrome. It's basically every web browser except Firefox that exists on the internet today. Google effectively wants to take further control of the internet, but through a side channel attack. You see, instead of going and taking over servers themselves, instead of their AMP project, the accelerated mobile pages, that lets them control a bunch of mobile websites by accelerating them for you, Google would like for you, Mr. Website Owner, to use them or a trusted, of course, big tech third party to say, yes, this person is allowed to visit your website. They would like for you to hand the keys to this kingdom over willingly. Will you do that? Probably not after I finish talking to you about it. The supposed goals of web environment integrity and remote attestation are to prevent ads from being clicked by robots, to prevent users from visiting the website that are really robots, basically to replace what you know as CAPTCHAs with an automated means of authenticating someone as a robot or a real person to the website. In a nutshell, the way that this works is your browser goes to a third-party remote attestation server. What's attestation? I keep saying that word. Basically, it's a server that attests, that promises that you are or aren't what they say. No, that's really weird, isn't it? What is attestation? You probably already have it in your computer. Your trusted platform module and secure boot combined allow for a framework that attests to your operating system that everything in the boot path from power on to that operating system starting was clean, authorized, correct, unmodified. It's basically a promise that things are secure. You can probably already see some problems forming with the way that this is set up. Your browser goes to this trusted third party to get a token, then hands the token to the web server. The token from this third party tells the server, yes, this person is a human, or no, this person is not a human, they're probably a bot, they're probably fake, they're probably automated, they're probably not a real person. How do they know this? control of the software. The entire idea is that your web browser is not modified, not hacked, not set up to do things that the people who wrote that browser do not want you to be able to do. For example, being able to automatically click on ads. This authorized, unmodified, clean, correct web browser can go to this remote attestation provider and request a token from them. Because it's that software requesting the token, because that software can provide what that provider expects to receive a valid, this is a human token, the trust relationship is created by proxy between the browser and the website using the attestation, the promise, of this third party provider. There are so many ways that this can go wrong or be worked around. For one thing, someone like me, who does not care about being honest with a computer and who owns my own hardware and insists on running whatever I want, can run a hacked, modified, unclean version of a web browser, but have that browser hacked, modified, whatever, as needed to tell the attestation server I am running a clean, proper, authorized, unmodified version of the browser, thereby gaining the token from them. Because at the end of the day, trust must start somewhere. And the number one mistake in software is trusting the client when you are the server.
A client can send you any type of data. What is the client going to send you in this case? Whatever it needs to send you to get that token that says that they're a human. If it's someone making a bot, what will they do? They'll just pretend to be the nice, clean, safe, correct browser to this server. The server will then hand it a you are a human token and it will gleefully pass it on and then bot, bot it up. So we've already determined that there's no way that this can actually serve its intended, stated purpose. How can you protect against bots? How can you authenticate a human when you are simply trusting that you're not being lied to? Yes, I'm a human. I'm not a robot. I am, I am not a robot. Please give me access token. Thank you. Web Environment Integrity introduces a third party between your users and your site. What this means is that this third party can arbitrarily decide to not allow certain people, certain places, certain entities to access your website without you ever knowing what is going on, without you ever finding out that they've done this. What happens if Cloudflare or Google or any other humongous multinational global tech corporation with huge moneyed interests happens to decide that they're going to kick you off one day. They don't like what you say. They don't like people you associate with. You don't have to be a person that is directly responsible for something they don't like. There's already a massive problem with the internet being far more fragile than we think it is. If you look into what's happened with Kiwi Farms attempting to stay up, no matter what you think of the website, the whole point of the concept of free speech is the defense of the most repulsive, the most unpopular speech, so that it can still be spoken and be in the marketplace of ideas to be scrutinized. Kiwi Farms has had an extremely difficult time keeping the website up. People at Google who do not like Kiwi Farms and its owner, Joshua Moon, have gone after him not by directly stopping their services towards his website, but instead by calling up other big tech companies and saying, hey, I'm with this big company. I'm a big person at this big company. You are hosting bad people that we don't like. You need to get rid of them. Please get rid of them. Thanks. And the other company goes, oh, a big name at a big tech company that we might have some kind of reliance on because they're big, they're monopolistic, they provide a lot of services, and they can pretty much control everything. Yeah, okay, you know what, we're not going to get in a fight with Google or Cloudflare today. So, pew, cut them off. It's easier to cut off these people than it is to stand up and say, no, we're not going to treat people differently just because you don't like them. We don't have to like them to take their money and uphold the basic principles that the United States of America was founded on. Unfortunately, these people in tech do not care. All it takes is a phone call from one person at Google to almost any other tech company and bam, you are out. Your services are no longer being rendered. Your DNS provider cuts you off. Your name registrar cuts you off. Your web host cuts you off. Your email provider cuts you off. Your ISP that provides you with connectivity to the internet cuts you off. Kiwi Farms was repeatedly cut off of the internet by CenturyLink, which is a top-level backbone service provider on the internet something that should absolutely be the peak of content neutrality. But it was not. And it continues today to be an on-again, off-again, flaky provider in that regard. If you look into what's happened to Kiwi Farms, even if you hate them and think they should be off the internet, it should terrify you that it is that simple to get someone kicked off the internet. One phone call from some angry person at some big tech company to another tech company, and you're out. You're putting a shim between your website 
and the people that use it that let this third party decide who gets to access your website. If you give Google control over who can access your website, then they can cut off those people. And even though the specification supposedly requires that the information collected to make this decision be low entropy, not personally identifying, the harsh truth is a lot of information gathering and record keeping has to happen. These digital dossiers must be created in order for these companies to decide whether or not you're a human or a bot. Otherwise, they're just trusting that you're not lying to them. This is the way that these machines always start. It's a simple little proposal that will increase web security, get rid of pesky bad user experience components like CAPTCHAs, and eliminate botting, spamming, and so on. It's just a nice little security thing. We're not going to collect your personally identifying information and keep a digital record of it all. No, that's explicitly not allowed in the spec. That, that's not something that we would ever do. Except at some point they're going to have to do that as countermeasures render this system irrelevant, unusable, moot. There will come a day when this remote attestation that supposedly can't identify anyone is used to identify someone and cut them off from internet access. Now maybe they can't cut you off from every website, but if a majority of websites on the internet adopt this spec, adopt this plan to use a big tech company as a way to decide whether or not you're allowed to access their website, this will be abused. It is not a matter of whether it can be or whether it might be. It will be. If there is one thing we have learned over the course of the life of the internet, it is that Everything that can be abused will eventually be abused. When you boil away all of the things that will not work because they cannot work, the only thing you're left with that is a useful purpose for this tool, web environment integrity, remote attestation, is booting people off the internet that are not technically savvy enough to get around it. Sure, they won't get booted off the whole internet, but they'll get booted off enough of it. Sure, they might be able to work around it eventually, but all it takes is for some of the people that you don't like to be booted off for a while. And then you can move on to the next thing. It's a cat and mouse game, but they're building a big banhammer mouse trap, and they want to trap all of the people that disagree in it. Now that might not be what they say at first, but that's the only possible use of this tool. If you thought trusted computing, trusted platform modules, software guard extensions, Windows Defender smart screen, all of this stuff that keeps you from running software that you want on hardware that you own, if you thought all of that was bad, imagine if you could do it to the entire World Wide Web. That's what Google's doing. That's what they're working towards. You must not put your trust and blind faith in Google, Microsoft, and Cloudflare. You've heard my warning. Now go do something about it. Take care.